Well, hello 2P, and welcome to your next lesson on factoring. Our goal today, I can take a trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c and turn it back into a product of two brackets. Okay, so this trinomial that we're working with, when I say it's of the form x squared plus bx plus c, I mean that there's no number in front of the x squared. Well, we actually understand that the number in front of x squared is 1, but we don't usually write it, so it appears like there's no number in front of the x squared. This is actually called simple trinomial factoring, and it is the reverse of expanding binomials. So I'm going to review expanding binomials right now, and then we're going to look for some patterns. So here's how we expanded binomials using the distributive law. I took this x and I multiplied it through this bracket, getting an x squared, and then x times negative 10 gives me negative 10x. And then I took the second number in the second term in this bracket and multiplied it through, which gives me a plus 5x and a negative 50. Now once we had that expanded out, we saw that usually the middle two terms can go together. And so I collect like terms and I know that a negative 10x and a positive 5x is going to give me negative 5x. And then I have a subtract 50. So now what we're going to do this time is to take an expression like x squared minus 5x minus 50 and turn it back into the two brackets that it came from. Uh, if we didn't know what those brackets were. And what we're going to do is start where all mathematicians do and we're going to look for a pattern. So I'm going to show you here. Uh, I've already expanded out a couple of binomials. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at multiplying binomials with the same signs. Now notice same signs is in big bold blue letters so that's important here. So we're going to expand and simplify these uh, binomials and I've already done that. Uh, you can look at them and make sure that I've done them properly, but here's what we see. Um, our answer, this x squared plus 7x plus 12, we're going to look and see if I can compare, compare these two answers because these binomials, these two have both have positive signs, so they have the same signs as each other, and these two over here both have negative signs, so they have the same signs as each other. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that it doesn't matter whether we had two positive signs or two negative signs, this last number here is positive in both of these cases. And the reason that is is because when I multiply integers that have the same signs, I get positive answers. Uh, the other thing I want you to notice is that this 12 comes from multiplying this 4 times the 3. And here, 4 times the 3. So we get 12 on the end from multiplying those last two terms. Now, this 7 in the middle, it's the same in both cases. Uh, the only difference is that in this case we have a plus 7, and in this case we have a minus 7. And over here we have a plus 7 because we had pluses in both the brackets. And over here we have a minus 7 because we had minuses in both the brackets. So when I got the two middle terms, they were both minuses because both the brackets were minuses. Or over on this side, when I got these two middle terms, they were both pluses because I had pluses in the brackets. So that's lots of patterns. So if we take a look at these four things that I have here, the sign of the last term is, and this is for for two binomials that have the same signs. Remember I told you that was bold and important. The last, the sign of the last term is always positive. The sign of the middle term is the same as the signs in the brackets. The last number is a product of the two constants. 4 times 3 gives me 12, 4 times 3 gives me 12. And that middle number, we didn't really talk about it, but 3 and 4 gives me 7, and 3 and 4 gives me 7, so it's the sum of the constants in the brackets. Now, what happens if we don't have the same signs in the two brackets? Well, going down here, what happens if multiplying binomials with different signs? So I've multiplied these out again. Let's see if we can look for some uh, patterns. Um, first of all, I've used the same numbers, I've just swapped some signs around, and 
we can notice that no matter which number has a positive or a negative, because over here the 4 is positive and the 3 is negative, over here the 3 is positive and the 4 is negative, doesn't matter which is which, I'm still getting a negative at the end. And that's because they have different signs and when I multiply integers with different signs, I get a negative answer. We also see we still get 12 on the end. That comes from multiplying the 4 times the 3 or in this case the 3 times the 4. Now the middle term here there's no coefficient which we understand there's a 1. So we have a positive 1 here and a negative 1 here and that looks like it's a difference of the 3 and the 4. If I subtract those two numbers I get this 1 in the middle and if I subtract these two numbers I get this 1 in the middle and notice that it's negative here because the bigger number was negative. Bigger number was negative. And over here, it's positive because the bigger number was positive. Bigger number was positive in the brackets. Okay, so looking at these, the sign of the last term is always negative. And that's because we're multiplying two things with different signs. Again, the big, bold, blue letters up there. The sign of the middle term is the same as the bigger constant in the bracket. So here we have a negative value in the middle term and that's because this bracket had the bigger number and it had a negative. The last number is a product of the constants in the brackets. That's exactly the same as it was when we had the same signs. And the middle number is a difference of the constants in the brackets. So I'm going to sum this up in this chart here for you. When we're factoring simple trinomials, this is the way you're going to ask yourself something. What is the sign of the constant term in the trinomial? So that's that last sign in the trinomial. And if it's positive or negative, that's going to tell you if you have the same signs or different signs. If it's negative, we follow this branch over here. And it says the signs and the factors are different. If they were positive, it tells us over here the signs and the factors are the same. And so we're going to actually use this thing to factor a couple of things, starting with this one here. So I'm going to factor this, and I'm going to go through the factoring flowchart, and then I'm going to do a couple of the other ones a slightly different way. So this is the first thing we ask. What is the sign of the constant term of the trinomial? So this is the constant term, the one without a variable, and it's negative. Since it's negative, we're going to follow this branch of the flowchart and it says the signs and the factors are different. So I know I need n's at the front in order to get n times n to give us this n squared and the signs are going to be different so I have to put a plus in one and a minus in the other. And now it says the second terms in the factors multiply to c and subtract to b. So since the signs are different they're going to multiply to 56 and subtract to b is the number in front of n, which in this case is 1. So what multiplies to 56 and has a difference of 1? And I hope you know that that's 7 and 8. And since this 1 in the middle is negative, I have to put the bigger number with the negative sign. So I put the 8 there and the 7 there. Now you can check and see if this is right by expanding it out. Now I don't expect you to do this every time and I'm going to do this in a different color so that you can see I don't expect you to do it every time. This isn't part of the solution. n times n gives us n squared. n times negative 8 gives us negative 8n. 7 times n is positive 7n. And 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. And these two things go together to give us that negative n in the middle, which is right back to what we got in the first place. So now let's try another one. This says, remember we have to take a look um, at the, if we're watch, following the factoring flowchart, we can say, what is the sign of the constant term in the trinomial? Well, this time the sign of the constant term is plus. So since the sign of the constant term is plus, I'm following this branch of the, uh, of the flowchart. And it says the signs and the factors are the same. So I know I'm going to need two brackets. I have an x 
and an x, and in order to get a positive 24, I need the same signs. What's the next part here it says? It says, what is the sign of the middle term in the trinomial? That's negative, and since it's negative, we follow this branch, and it says the signs of the factors are both negative. So I'm going to put two negatives in there. And then this says the second term in the factors multiply to c and add to b. So they have to multiply to 24 and add to 4. I don't think there's anything that multiplies to 24 and adds to 4. Um, what are our choices for 24? There's 1 and 24, uh, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 6 and 4, and none of those add to 4. So this one is one that we say is not possible. So you can put an NP. Sometimes they are not possible. Now, I'm going to walk you through the next ones, but I'm not going to follow the flow chart. You have a copy of the flow chart if you want it, but I'm just going to walk through them. I'm going to put my two sets of brackets down, and I'm going to put B's at the start. And then I have to take a look at this that tells me that my signs are going to be the same. If it's plus, they have to both be the same. And then I need to look at this one, and it tells me they're both positive. So I'm going to put my two positives in. Now I'm going to have a look at, uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of read this backwards. I need two numbers that multiply to 7 and add, notice I'm pointing at that plus sign, add, to 8. So what's two numbers that multiply to 7 and add to 8? Well, there's actually only two numbers that multiply to 7, and that's 1 and 7, and luckily they also happen to add to 8. Next one, put down my two sets of brackets. Ends go at the start. This tells me that the signs are both the same. If this is a plus, it tells me they're the same, and then I look over here and it tells me they're both negative. So I put my two negatives in. Now I'm going to read this backwards again. I need two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11. Well, two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11 are 10 and 1. Down here, 64. 64 has got a lot of factors, so we may have to think about this a little bit, or maybe not. We know we need b's at the front to get a b times a b gives us a b squared. This plus at the end tells me the signs are both the same, and then I look over here and that plus tells me that they're both positive. So now I read this backwards. I look at 64 and I know my two numbers have to multiply to 64 and add, that's a plus sign, add to 16. Well, what multiplies to 64 and adds to 16? That's going to be 8 and 8. Next one, bracket, 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 bracket. I know I need n's at the front this time, so that n times n gives me this n squared. Now, this tells me the signs are different, so I have 1 plus and 1 minus. And now I read it backwards, what multiplies to 12 and subtracts, that's a subtraction sign I'm looking at, subtracts to 4. Multiplies to 12 and subtracts to 4. Well, let's look at all the things that multiply to 12. There's 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. 2 and 6 are the ones that subtract to 4. Remember, we have to multiply to 12 and subtract to 4. So I need the 2 and the 6, and since the middle term here is positive, that means that the bigger number, 6, has to go with the positive. So I put the 6 there and the 2 there. Now we're going to do one more here. Bracket, 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 bracket. M's at the start. I know the signs are different, so there's going to be 1 plus and 1 minus. And let's read it backwards again. They have to multiply to 24 and subtract to 2. Multiply to 24 and subtract to 2. What multiplies to 24? There's 1 and 24. 2 and 12. Uh, 3 and 8 and 4 and 6 and 5 doesn't go so I know I have them all. So what multiplies to 24 and subtracts to 2? 
Well, when I take a look, it's the 4 and the 6 that subtract to 2. And since the middle number is positive, I need more positive. So I put the 6 here and the 4 here. And that concludes our lesson. Give them a try.